So as I said before, thank you very much. I'm not an, an engineer, or I'm particularly mechanically inclined, and I have to admit I'm not either mathematically inclined. <laughs> but uh, strange things happen, and I'm here to tell you something about maths and uh, 3D printing. <laughs> so just to connect to the very interesting lecture that you just listened, uh, the Asher drawings have been used also in 3D printing for making cookie cutters, <laughs> and it's a particularly useful way of cutting the pastry for the cookies without wa wasting time and pastry and I just found this one that it's even more interesting and there's also the very nice um, uh, questions uh, that we were looking before made printed on a roller so you can just roll them on the cookies again or if you want uh, also on clay or something like that to make a decoration and these are all STL files that are downloadable for free the guy who made them just asks for a link back if you put the picture somewhere and you can print them on any of these printers we never tried but we will certainly do because they look fantastic and these are the famous, here they are. This is how they look in the inverse and... Uh, <laughs> so, I wanted to talk a little bit, just very shortly, about a software that is used to make uh, STL files starting from the equation. Uh, just a, a, a thing before, because I've been asked, this is the blog where I've put all the information about uh, building the printers and the issues we had and so on, and where there are now the pictures that uh, we took during the workshop, just a part of then we'll put more certainly in the next days and uh, more information links and so on so if you want to have a look at it it's uh, the okay so this is the example from everything from which everything started and it's uh, I'll pass it on it's a very nice mathematical shape. I have to admit that I have no real understanding of the equation that it's behind it. There is an article where I explained on the book all the various uh, steps to do it and where all the links that I will show you are already written and in the PDF version they are clickable so you don't have to write long uh, web addresses that are always annoying. This is the software. It's a very old software and uh, it's not uh, upgraded for the Macintosh, so it only works up till Tiger, I think. It works fine, I have a, an XP here on my machine for which I use it, and uh, it works fine on the Linux, I think, but uh, if you have a newer version of Macintosh, you have to use an emulator or something like that. It's very used by a lot of people around for its mathematical properties and for its artistical properties also, because many people have uh, created the objects afterwards with 3D printing, with uh, these machines or with the much more uh, precise machines that you can buy can you can do by shape with the professional ones I've collected some of the pictures to show you sorry I hate doing live things because I always <laughs> lose the place where I am so this, these are the um, patterns that are then sold on Shapeways, so some people have designed it and then get some kind of a small amount of money for the pattern. And they are all kinds of shapes and some of them are already have been pretty printed. So if you look on Thingiverse, you can find the original file and what the people have realized with it. This is the original of the one we saw before. This is uh, obviously not uh, possible to do on these printers, but it's always done with the same software that I will show you. And uh, this guy is really good at doing these things. So sometimes you get this result uh, while the, what you wanted was much more complicated because the original file will see it was much more intricate. This is the one of a, of a guy that wrote uh, a very nice step-by-step -step tutorial on his blog from which I took most of the information for putting it on the, on the book. So the software, as I was telling you, I'll show it to you on Windows, is uh, very complicated in my opinion, so I use just a tiny, tiny fraction. So you have the possibility here to insert all the mathematical function and then just compute and he will show you the result. They have a lot of uh, built-in uh, um, examples that you can play with and you can change the various uh, numbers. You can change them, change them randomly, like I'm terribly... <laughs> do, uh, like I'm doing or you can change them knowing what you do and this would be the, the better choice if you're <laughs> good with mathematics obviously but <laughs> 
<laughs> so here you see you can change everything and then in the end you've got the possibility to export the the object here export resolution you've got an edit obj and it's just a text file in this text file, you just save it, you add the OBJ um, uh, file name under, after it, and then you can open it straight away with Cura, uh, for example. It's always better to pass the file in uh, NetFab and MeshLab, or MeshLab, where we talked about yesterday, because it frequently leaves holes in the meshes. Not all of these objects are printable, obviously. This one that you can see, I see him, he's watching me with doubt in his eyes. This is just a surface and can't be printed. This must be, again, and then modified in a graphical software. Some of them, like the one that is passing there, instead it was a perfectly closed surface and could just go directly inside the 3D printer. And um, except from some very small holes in the meshes. And I wanted to show you also a couple of very, very nice uh, mathematical uh, uh, resources for which you can get the various um, mathematical formulas to use here, the equations. They are uh, from all over the world. I put all the links so you can all get them there. This is from uh, Turin in Italy, where they show um, animation of the, of the picture and uh, the equation that you can just copy and paste. The software wants the equation in this uh, LaTeX form, in this kind of... Uh, computer okay computer format so you have to simplify it if you get these kinds of formula but it's very easy I'm able to do it so everybody can do it <laughs> and there are a lot of various resources some of them are incredibly fascinating from my point of view because they show you all these kinds of pictures that are so nice to look at also <laughs> And uh, this one is very nice because it's a Java applet that gives you the possibility also to interact with the objects. This is a Klein bottle and you can see it built up and closed. And you can also change also visually the various parameters and see what happens to it, the width and uh, the height and everything, and then get the formula to put inside the software, change more if you have the interest and the capabilities of doing it, and then uh, print it. And there are others like this, I just wanted to have you to have a look at the various possibilities. And then they can be very interesting uh, showcase mantelpieces or jewelry if the the size and obviously the <laughs> it's uh, it's good for it. Or they can be like uh, professor the professor um, from Harvard, uh, Oliver, told us yesterday, the, two days ago. It are particularly interesting to showcase the various difficulties in uh, seeing these objects. So. Uh, moving them and seeing them from the various points of view. And this is a very straightforward, easy way for which somebody that doesn't know mathematics like me can do it, while there are many others like Mathematica that it's a very complex software that gives the same results but with a much more, more difficult to approach uh, interface. So this is just it, it was just a small... Uh, <laughs> So just to show you another, this, another thing and I'll leave Danielle to the more artistic point of view or there's before... Uh, okay. It's just. <laughs> oh yeah, perfect.